so you want to shoot product shots like MKBHD? Well, maybe this lens is the answer. Today, we are looking at the Sigma 24mm 1.4 lens for the Sony system. The reason why you probably want to pick up a lens like this for YouTube is well because it's kind of a really useful angle for seeing plenty in the shot. It's nice and wide for the A roll like this. I mean, you've got room to be able to put things like a table in the foreground, something you're not gonna get with a more compressed lens. And with it being 1.4, you can still blur out that background even with such a wide angle look. Now, traditionally, this sort of lens would be more used for things like astrophotography or wedding photography. And certainly, I think it would be a great lens for those kind of things, but I'm not gonna really talk about that here. For me, it's all about how good is it gonna be for YouTubing, and also perhaps how good it could be used for doing interiors for say real estate or resorts, as that's something I do a lot of. Let's start off talking about the body and the design of this lens. And like all Sigma art lenses, it is built brilliantly. It's built like a tank, although not heavy like a lot of other Sigma lenses are. That's the first thing I was really impressed. I've owned Sigma Primes in the past, like the 50mm uh, EF lens, and they are really heavy. That's certainly not the case with this Sigma 24mm for the Sony system. They've really redesigned it and made it a lot more compact and much better for mirrorless cameras. It feels much better balanced in the hand than the old Sigmas ever did. Despite that though, it still feels really well made and really solid. The outside is fully metal, it's got a nice rubberized grip on the uh, focus ring. And you also have an aperture ring on there as well, which is quite nice. Something that I don't think I'd be that bothered about using. For me, using just the aperture control on the camera is absolutely fine. Although it's always nice to have that, I guess, as an option. There's also a switch for turning on and off autofocus, which is always nice to see and not always the case on all lenses. So I'm glad Sigma haven't got rid of it. On the side, you've also got your assignable button, so it's obviously preset so that you can use it for focus hold or whatever else you might want to use it for, which is nice, again, to see on the side of the lens. One cool thing this lens has is a focus lock. This means that if you're in manual focus, you can lock it in that position. So say you're doing uh, astrophotography or you're doing a time lapse, for example, this could be really useful so you don't accidentally knock your focus out uh, if you touch the lens. So you might wanna set your focus to infinity or whatever you might want to set it to, switch that on and you know for sure it's not gonna suddenly change halfway through your time lapse. Now, I'm not gonna go into detail talking about sharpness of this lens because to be honest, all of these Sigma lenses are super sharp nowadays. In fact, pretty much every lens on the market looks great on pretty much any camera. So I don't think that's really much of a reason to pick one lens over another. So why do I think this lens could be ideal for YouTubing? Well, first off, it's for things like this, the A-roll shot. It's nice and wide to the point where you can see a table in front. So it could be really useful if you're doing products. So take this uh, Sigma 24 millimeter lens here. For example, I can be showing a product nicely in the A-roll shot and you can see it all clearly. I can even hold it up to the lens and hopefully it will focus. There you go, you get a nice close-up shot all in one. Now this does have a really impressive close focusing distance. You can get really right up to the lens and it still manages to maintain focus, which is nice to see. Not only does it allow you to see more in the shot, also a 24 millimeter is just quite a nice intimate feel with your audience as well. It depends on the style you're going for, but some people really like to feel like they're close to their audience and that 24 millimeter definitely gives you that effect. Now, one of the negatives of shooting with such a wide angle lens is it's going to distort around the outside. So of course, it's not going to be the most flattering lens uh, if you start getting really close to it as you're talking and going near the edges of the frame. But certainly, if you just want something where you're sat in the middle and you want to be able to see plenty but still feel really close to your audience, this is quite a nice combination. Now, I did have a go at vlogging with the lens and it kind of works, it's absolutely fine. I think it is wide enough. You do have to hold your arm out fairly far and some people would probably prefer something a bit wider, say a 20 mil lens or something that has a bit of zoom so you can actually vary up your focal length depending on what you're actually doing. But it is certainly a usable angle and because it is a lot smaller than a, say, 24 to 70 lens and certainly a lot lighter, it is actually quite easy to hand hold out in front of you. Now, probably the reason why you clicked on this lens and that is shooting like MKBHD. You've seen his style before. He really likes to do this sort of first person view when using equipment. And it's a really cool way of showing off equipment from the perspective of the user. And to get that perspective, you need a lens like this. You need something that's wide enough so you get the entire uh, context of it in. You can see the entire product. And also it kind of gives you a feel like it's you looking from uh, your angle. And because of the 1.4, 
aperture, it means you can get that nice shallow depth of field still. So you're not seeing everything in the background and on the floor, which can be really distracting, especially when you want to look at a product. For that kind of thing, this lens is actually really ideal. The close focusing means you can get bring it up closer to the lens without any problem whatsoever. But also, even when you're holding it further away, it's not too hard to be able to hold the camera and the product at the same time. Now, when it comes to more traditional B-roll shots of products, it is a bit too wide angle. And I think for those cases, you would want to go for something a bit more uh, telephoto, something like a 35 or a 50 millimeter instead. Now, because of its small size, of course, it is ideal for sticking on a gimbal. And that is something that I'm really intrigued about how you could use this lens. Unfortunately, while I've had this lens, I haven't had any shoots where I would actually need to do uh, wide angle interiors, although I could imagine this would be a pretty good option. For some people, it's not wide enough. Some people really like super wide shots when doing real estate shots and interiors. But for me, I actually quite like the longer focal length of 24 millimeters. I think it just compresses the room nicely. It just makes the objects in the room look a bit nicer. And I like the fact that you can see a bit more of the exterior as well. One criticism of this lens is its focus breathing. And it is there, it certainly is there. If you move in and out, you may see that the background changes quite a bit as the focus changes. And that is frustrating. It's a shame that is the case and it is, there is definitely focus breathing going on. It's not necessarily a critical issue. It's not something that I would say is a reason to completely avoid this lens, because certainly it's not too bad as you move back and forth slightly. It's just only if you're doing real extreme movements. In terms of flaring, it's very well controlled, and I guess that's important to you if you do a lot of landscapes with a lens like this. Uh, for something like, for me, I don't feel that would be a problem at all. In fact, I usually quite like lenses that flare a bit more anyway. So after playing around with this lens, would I go ahead and purchase it for myself? Well, it's a cool lens, and it certainly has a nice look and a unique sort of perspective that I could see being very useful for a lot of people. And certainly for doing YouTubing like this, it's nice that you can have one lens where you can kind of see it all. Is it the only lens I would want to own if I was doing YouTube? Well, no, not really. I think it's a bit too wide angle for a lot of use cases. For things like gimbling, I could totally see how it's useful. For things like vlogging, it's maybe a bit too tight. For me, I think depending on what you want to do, you might want to go either a bit wider or a bit tighter. You probably want to be looking at a 20 mil or a 35 millimeter instead. For other sorts of filmmaking, it's not the first lens I would be purchasing. As I've done a review in the past, I love the Sigma 24 to 70 millimeter lens. For me, that is a much more versatile lens and a much better use of your initial money if you're investing in lenses early on. I would go for that first before looking at prime lenses like the Sigma 24 millimeter, despite it being a very good lens in itself. So there you go, that is my review of the Sigma 24 millimeter 1.4 lens. A really nice lens. I love the shallow depth of field. I love the close focusing. I love how light and small it is and the look that you can get from it. For me though, I think I will be sticking to the 24 to 70 millimeter from Sigma instead, just because it's so much more versatile as a lens for most production use that I need it for. For. If you want to see more about this lens, then check out my video where I do a full review on why I love this lens and I think it's the only lens that you need to own.